Okay, let's build out a containerized workflow here using the Cloud9 environment. Cloud9 allows us to bypass a lot of trouble that typically comes up in a project. I'm gonna to go to Cloud9 and I'm gonna create a new environment here. And this one will be uh, for doing a Docker build. There we go. And I'm gonna pick a slightly larger one uh, because I'm gonna do some building and I'm gonna use Amazon Linux as the default. Great, that looks like it works. Uh, and then when that's while that's getting created, I'm also gonna to go to GitHub here and I'm gonna create a new project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call this uh, Docker Praj. And uh, we'll say this is for a Docker workflow. Okay, and then I will initialize with a readme. Also grant a Python file here. Perfect. Okay. So next up, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my Docker environment here, uh, or to my Cloud9 environment, and uh, I'm gonna basically get things set up so that I, I can do things with Docker, build an application, um, things like that. So what's the first thing that I'm gonna do? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create a um, SSH key locally here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll do SSH keygen TRSA. Again, this is only necessary the very first time you're in a, in a new AWS Cloud9 environment. Once you've done it, you don't have to do it again, uh, but I'm gonna show you the steps. Let's cat this, great. Okay, I've got a public SSH key now, and I'll go over to my GitHub account, go to settings, go to SSH and GPG keys, go through here and set this up, and we'll call this Docker project, great. Okay, it asked me to authenticate. I'm gonna go ahead and authenticate. And now what I can do is I can go back to that project I just set up, which is a Docker project, and I'm gonna clone it. There we go. And notice I clone via SSH so that I don't have to keep asking for the password again. Perfect. And now I'll say get clone. Great, now I have bidirectional communication. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do now inside of here is CD into that directory and then lay out the scaffolding for my project. So I typically uh, always start with a make file. Uh, next, next up, what I'll do is I'll also make a requirements file. Here's a requirements.txt file. I'll also make a Docker file. This is a new one. And then I'm going to uh, make a uh, app.py file. And this is gonna be our application code. Okay, now that I've got those set up, I can look at this tree here. And inside this tree, I can start pasting things in. So first, I'm gonna build out a Docker file here, and I'm gonna click on that Docker file, and I'm gonna paste this code in here. So what this does is it uses the official Python 3 um, package, uh, basically Docker container, and then I'm gonna build off of that. So I'm gonna say a working directory will be app. I'm gonna copy a file that I have locally in my repo into this directory, and then I'll need to later remember that when I shell into the machine, and then I'm gonna tell it to uh, basically install packages inside this machine. Okay, that looks good. Now let's go to our app. Let's make something really simple here. Uh, I'm going to just uh, paste in uh, a really basic uh, kind of hello world script here. Let's go ahead and do that. Great, and then I'll also just do a chmod plus x app. There we go. So this one, if I test it locally here, you can see uh, it'll just run um, Hello World. There we go. And if I went to help, you can see I've even got some help messages and there's a lot of nice things you can do with Click. Okay, got an app, got a Docker file. <clears throat> Let's go and also build out a uh, make file here. So in order to build out the make file structure, um, what I'm gonna do is look at maybe an existing makefile I've got. I know I have one in GitHub somewhere. Let's go ahead and find one. Uh, here, let's go to this. And what does this one look like? This is 
Okay, make file. Let's just copy this as a skeleton here. And then I'll explain what these things do. Okay. And inside of here, what we've got, and I'll just call this uh, environment uh, Docker Proj. There we go. And, and so essentially what this is going to do is it's going to allow me to use something called a Hado lint as well. And what Hado lint does is um, it actually lints my Docker file. So I'm going to next, after I've created this make file here, uh, I'm, I'm going to want to download that um, Hado lint file. So I can do that in one fell swoop. I'm, I'll just paste this in like that. So wget, grab it um, from GitHub, and then chmod it afterwards. Let's see if that works. I can just do a up arrow here. <clears throat> so it doesn't like it when I try to change permissions. So let's say sudo, um, sudo chmod plus x bin hado lint. There we go. And now if I just say make lint, does that work? So um, it looks like it it is actually successfully linting that Docker file. Great. So now I've got some Docker linting set up, which is, is pretty neat. In the requirements file, I'm going to need to install um, the click uh, command line library. And I'm also going to need to install PyLint. OK. And, and then what I'll do as well is that I will create a virtual environment real quick. Uh, I always like to do that. So I'll use the convention that I typically use. So I'll say Python 3-m virtual environment tilde slash dot docker prize. So I name it the name of my GitHub repo. Great. And then from here, what I'll do is I will um, run that. Perfect. And then from, from here, I will also uh, go ahead and source it. So here we go. Source Docker project bin activate. Great. And then next, uh, I can actually do that make install command and just make sure that everything is going to be installed correctly. Perfect. So things are basically set up here so that I have the ability to make a container that can run this application. So, so this is the next step here is what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a Docker build command. Uh, fortunately, the AWS environment already has this set up. So if I do this, I say Docker build dash dash tag uh, equals app dot. Uh, what will happen is it'll pull down that base container and then it's going to allow me to make my changes above it. So it's going to be this and this. Uh, and this is really the power of Docker is you can use an official base container, package up your own uh, software on top of it, test out locally, and then you're able to package the runtime as well as the, the business logic that you've made for your application. Okay, let's see if this is successful. Okay, then really the only thing next we'll, be able, we'll need to do is just do a list command here. So if I docker image ls, you can see that I created an image called app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run docker and tell it that I want to basically shell into that container that I just created. Great. And now from here, I can do the ls command. And look, here's my application. And if I want to test it out, I can actually uh, go through here and run python app.py. And there, there, we, there, you can see that I've actually been able to successfully deploy my code. I also could, from here, go ahead and uh, take that and, let's say, push it to Docker Hub or push it to uh, Amazon ECS. Great. So we, we've been uh, very successful here at creating this project. And so the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try to set up a, a Circle CI config. I, I like to do a uh, build system every time I, I work on a project. So I'm going to go ahead and do that next. I'm going to do uh, make directory dot circle C, uh, circle CI. And then I'm going to uh, make the config file in here. So that's going to be config dot YML, I believe. And what I can do is I can paste uh, some, some a config file that I've created previously inside. 
So I'm going to go through and do that. Okay, let's go to this um, config file here. Great. And, and let's just walk through some of the things that I'm going to do inside of this config file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, do the same Docker base. Uh, I'm going to do what I typically do, install dependencies. But this time I'm adding a little twist in that I'm actually needing to tell this um, environment to use this Hado lint tool, which is a tool that lets me lint Docker files. And then everything else basically works the same because I use a make lint. And if you, we look at the make file here, you can see I just added one extra step uh, inside of here. So things are looking pretty good, but let's add a little twist here. And actually, let's see if we can get Circle CI to run locally. So one thing that you can do with Circle CI that's pretty neat is it, it actually has a local mode. So let's go find Circle CI local mode, Circle CI uh, local. There we go. And what I can do is um, do this quick installation command. So I'm going to run this command here. And let's go ahead and try that out. Great. Um, and it says that uh, permission is denied. So I'm going to do sudo exclamation exclamation. There we go. And it says cannot move user to user local permission. Um, well, what we can do, there's a couple different ways we can solve that problem, is that we can just see if it works first. Let's see here. User local bin circle. Let's see if this is there. Circle CI. So it doesn't look like that's working. So we could try a slightly different approach to install this. Um, so what we can do is do a manual download here and we could just release it that way. That looks like that might be a better way to do it. Here we go. Here's a Linux um, download. I believe I can just copy that link and then go to Circle CI and uh, let's just go into the temp directory and let's uh, do a wget and uh, uh, grab that locally and then do tar x or z uh, x v f uh, and then the name of that file this will uh, unpack it and then from here you can see that i've actually got access to this um, file so uh, if i wanted to i can actually just um, move this this circle ci command here let's go here let's just go into this directory cd into here perfect and um, I believe you can just run this. Let's try that. Great. So, so basically what this circle CI command locally does is it allows me to simulate some of the commands that uh, you know the circle CI would do remotely. Um, and what, what's what's kind of neat about that uh, is that this this really gives me a lot of uh, capabilities uh, to to test things out. So. If, Let's, let's actually make this a slightly easier to run here. And um, let's, let's actually see if we can move this circle CI uh, into, let's say, the home directory. Let's just say tilde. Um, let's try that. And then let's just CD into there. And I see circle CI now. So what I can try is, um, and I, in fact, I'll move it again into this environment because Cloud9 has a, a specific environment that it has access to. Great. Okay, so so now it's basically in the working directory that I'm typically used to. And so what I could do is I could actually test out one of these, you know, Circle CI configs. And how could we do this? Well, I have a previous project here that I'm going to look at to see how I've tested this out previously. Let's go to this make file here. And you can see there's some, some commands here. So let's try a couple of these commands. Let's paste them into our make file environment. Uh, I'm gonna go here and then I'm gonna I'm gonna run this command. So I'm gonna put in this command validate circle CI. Now uh, in this case, I'm gonna need to go to Docker Proj 
and I'm gonna need to tell it to go one directory up, or I'm gonna need to give it the full path to that project, or I need to put it into this directory. I guess probably the cleanest way to do this would be maybe what I'll do is I'll just move in this CircleCI file into my Docker Proj. There we go. And then I can just run them exactly the way they were before. So let's go ahead and, and try this out. Uh, again, remember that I created that, that CircleCI file already. So let's validate my config. Let's test out and see if it even runs. So we'll say make validate. Let's see here. Make uh, validate. Let, let's just try any any kind of a make command first. Let's see here. Yeah. So we'll just say uh, make uh, make lint. Let's just verify that that works. Okay, lint things still work. So let's now try make validate circle CI. Does that work? No rule. Oh, because we didn't save it. There we go. <laughs> let's go ahead and run that. And it says. Um, no circle CI file found. So that tells us something, which is that maybe we didn't name this thing properly. That might be one one thing that we could check out. We also could just try the run local as well. So make run circle CI local. Let's try that one. Or we even just run the command. That might be easier. Okay. Here we go. So this command is not found because we need to execute it. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll just do dot slash. And that does appear to be doing the right thing. I think we were just missing something here. So this says invalid memory address. So we're seeing that there's a problem running this thing locally, which is not that big of a deal. It just means that there's a installation error in uh, installing this package. But in a nutshell, this is potentially one way that you could you could also test out Circle CI is not just run it uh, remotely, but run it locally. And there's some debugging that we'll need to do to fix that. But what I'll do is I'll do it the old fashioned way. I'm gonna go ahead and commit this code. So I'm gonna move this circle CI directory into the temp directory. And I'm gonna say a git status and just check all this in. So we'll say git add uh, dot circle CI. And then I'll do a git add, uh, add in these uh, peripheral files here. Okay. And now adding in Docker project, the only thing left would be to go and actually uh, hook this up in Circle CI. Let's go back to Circle CI here. I think it's right here, this tab. And let's select uh, Build New Project. Okay, Add Projects. And we should see this one as a new project, uh, which would be, there we go, Docker Project. Okay. And then we'll just say start building because we, we've already made that config file. And if everything is correct, the linting and everything is correct, this should work. And then later we can figure out how to properly install a local version of Circle CI, which is very useful as well. But first, let's see if this, this thing actually works. Well, it looks to be successful, which is great. So we're able to actually completely lint uh, a Docker file project plus Python code. We were able to test it out locally. So I would call this a success. And then in another video, I can dive into how to configure local CircleCI and test that as well.